Let the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ rule in you. You will find the peace of God that passes all understanding. You will find the excellence of the King ruling in you. Judgment, righteousness. He will bring the love of the kingdom of God into your heart. And you will, by and by, according to God's time, and we patiently wait, for the appearing, for the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfection of the beauty of the holiness of the Lord, manifest in those who wait upon him by the Spirit, who do not go back to the law to try to fulfill the righteousness of God according to the law, that do not try to justify themselves by the works of the flesh, that don't use the grace of God and the liberty that we have in Christ to uh, fulfill the appetites of our flesh or to go back to the lust and the pride of life and these things, the sin that so easily besets us, but we stay fixed in Jesus Christ and we recognize the grace of the Lord who has purchased us with his own blood, who now has redeemed us, who is leading us into all truth, that we might exemplify, that we might manifest unto the world the love of Christ Jesus, which is the fulfillment of all of the law in the prophets. If you can love your neighbor as yourself, and all of the people in the world are our neighbors, they are our friends. We have to view these as God's children. No, they may not know God. No, they may not be born again yet from above but they still have the seed of God in their heart because they were created in his image and in his likeness. And God is faithful. That which he has begun, he will bring to completion. But thanks be unto God who, the, who has called you, who has chosen the people out of the darkness of the world, that they might manifest the light and the love of God unto a groaning creation. And the Lord has chosen you for a purpose to show forth his splendor, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his long suffering, all of the fruit of the Spirit that are found in our Lord Jesus Christ, that these things might be seen, that they might be developed in us by a new and a living way, by the character of Christ, until saviors rise up on Mount Zion to show the deliverance of the Lord, the selflessness of of the Lamb of Calvary unto all creation. And this is taking place today. This is a present reality. We thank God for this. We're to a glorious place in the scripture, Galatians, the five, the fifth chapter, uh, where Paul is writing beautiful and strengthening words for our soul, for the edification of the body of Christ. So let's get into this wonderful word of God, starting out in the first uh, verse of Galatians, the fifth chapter. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Christ Jesus has set you free by the word of faith, by trusting not in your own ability or in your works or in your labor. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And he has sent the Spirit of the Son into your heart by which you cry out, Abba, Father, or Father, my dear Father, I trust in you. I do not trust in my own ability. I'm not going to go back to the law to try to complete or finish that which you have begun in me by faith, by the grace of the Lord, you will complete it. And so I submit myself unto you by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the word of faith, the word that's been planted into my heart. I'm going to wait for that word to produce all of the attributes of godliness and righteousness, and the Lord is faithful, he will do it. So Paul is saying, stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. He came to liberate the children of God, to liberate the human race from the bondage of corruption, from the bondage of the law of sin and death, whereby in their nature is sin, and the fruit of that sin is death, he came to liberate us by the cross 
of Christ by the cross of Calvary. He's paid the price for our sin. He raised again for our justification that we might trust in the God who raises the dead. And he ascended up on high and he sent the Holy Spirit into our heart that we might walk out the things of God by the power of the Spirit. Thanks be unto God. So we don't want to turn back to the law of Moses, back to the laws and the commandments and the ordinances of men to try to be made perfect by the flesh, but we want to stay in the freedom. Oh, how glorious it is to be free. The Lord has made us free. Let us stand in that freedom. Let us walk in that freedom. John 8, 31, just a cross-reference here. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And of course, Jesus Christ is the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And that's a progressive walk, ladies and gentlemen. We, we, as we walk with the Lord by the Spirit, we more and more know the truth. Our understanding is enlightened, and we come to intimately know the works and the word of the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in verse 34, he says, Then Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And this is the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. He has made us to be sons of God through the new birth, through being born again from above by the Spirit. We could not do that of ourselves. Jesus, by the power of the Spirit, he has sent forth his word into our heart. And now we are growing up into him. And it's the liberty that we have as sons of God. Sons of God, not slaves, not trying to work out uh, the, the works Uh, of the flesh, not trying to work out of the works of the flesh to produce righteousness, but working after the power of the spirit. Yes, it's still, there's still works involved. Thank God for that. Uh, We don't just sit idly and, and say, okay, Lord, when you want me to be saved, when you want me to be righteous, you'll do the work in my heart. No, we have righteousness by faith. It's in our heart. It's in the spirit. It's in the spirit, man. It's in the inner man. We have the righteousness of, of Christ now, today, but that righteousness is now growing up in us and covering us and filling us to overflowing and even swallowing up the death in our body. This is a progressive work, but we stay in the spirit of the Lord, trusting in the word of God, working, yes, actively by faith as he leads us and guides us, but not in our own strength and certainly not going back to the works of the law. Back to Galatians, uh, second second verse there in in chapter 5. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of of righteousness by faith. Well, folks, let's be clear here. Paul is not speaking to our generation in which circumcision for young boys, uh, newborn babies that are born, is not. They're, they're not doing that at the hospital, or people aren't having their children circumcised for uh, for the sake of uh, following the commandments of Moses or the uh, law of of Israel. Okay. Or the law of God. They're doing this for purposes of cleanliness and for hygiene's sake and all these things that have to do with what they've proven that there's a benefit there. And this is scientifically proven, so forth and so on. And still, still, it is a choice of the parents. And then eventually it'll be a choice of the man uh, as he grows. If, If he wasn't circumcised as a baby, he can always get circumcised. Okay, but it has nothing to do with keeping the law of God. And and when Paul says, if you're circumcised and you've fallen from grace, he's not talking about circumcision that has to do with hygiene or, you know, the culture that we live in over in America and so forth. All right. He's talking about if you try to fulfill 
the law of God by, by being circumcised. He wasn't talking to babies. How could a baby make a decision whether or not they want to be circumcised? In our day and age, over in the Western world, they circumcise infants. There's no question for the child about it. It's a decision that's made by the doctors or by the parents. Okay, he's talking to grown men. And he's saying to people that weren't circumcised as, as children on the eighth day according to the law because these were Gentiles, He's saying, if you go now and, and are circumcised for the purpose of trying to fulfill the covenant of Moses, the righteousness that comes by the law, then you're falling from grace because you're not trusting the Lord to do it in you. You're taking the initiative to say, I'm going to be righteous. I'm going to be justified by the works of the law. And he's going to, he has been building on this, and he continues to build on the fact that you're trying to do what only the Spirit can do. And it's already been proven by the law. You cannot be justified by your flesh. Your flesh is fallen. It is fallen, and in, in you are in the nature of sin according to the flesh. You have to have a Savior. Jesus Christ comes and redeems you from the curse of the law and gives you a new life. This is not trying to fix up the old life uh, by Jesus. This is taking the old life completely away by the cross of Christ. And now you have a brand new life, a sinless life. Thanks be unto God. You've received, if you have faith in Jesus, you've received the life of Christ as a newborn child. And you're going to grow up into that righteousness by faith, by a continual walking with him, a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. So you don't want to go back to the law. Uh, circumcision is just a picture in this case of going back to the law of Moses. And we have to have that in our minds so we don't get confused with the modern day application of circumcision. It has nothing to do with keeping the law of Moses. In the scripture here, he's talking about going back to the law of Moses. Okay, continuing on. Let's look back again at the fourth verse. In the fifth chapter, you have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. In other words, you're not, you're not depending on the Lord by his grace to do the work. You're trying to do the work yourself by the law. Verse 5, for we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And why does he say we eagerly wait? Well, because... We come to Christ expecting the righteousness of the Lord to be fulfilled in us. Holiness, truth, purity, sinlessness. Jesus was without sin. He was the spotless lamb of Calvary. And yet we find that when we turn to Christ, immediately we don't walk in perfection. We trust God that by faith his spirit is in us and his spirit is perfect, sinless. He's in our heart. We're desiring to follow after, follow after him. And we reckon the old man that we were to be crucified with him. And yet we still see sin working in our members. We don't manifest the perfection of the beauty of God in perfect holiness. So we're waiting for that which the Lord has begun in us to be fulfilled. And that's where there's a struggle in the inner man because we're not producing fully the fruits of righteousness. So what's the tendency of the flesh to do? To go back to the law. And these Judaizers, they were encouraging the people. They were saying, look, you're preaching unrighteousness. You say that righteousness comes by faith in Jesus Christ. How, why are you sinning then? We still see sin working in you. Go back to the law to fulfill it. Get circumcised. Do all the ordinances and the, the commandments of Moses. Then you'll be righteous. They, they were speaking against the truth. Righteousness wouldn't come by the law. They had to wait on the righteousness that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. And even though we don't immediately see perfection in us, we wait for the Lord to appear in us. Praise be unto God. And this is where patience is is worked out in us. Patience, and we go through trials, we go through tribulation. All of this is working for us, a great work of God in the inner man that will swallow up death in victory. By and by, thanks be unto God. Now to Romans 8, 22, just as a cross-reference. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains, 
together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So in a nutshell, again, Paul writing to the Romans speaks of, we have hope in the redemption of our body, in this corruptible putting fully on incorruption, in this mortal body fully putting on immortality. And we are preaching that the kingdom of God has come to the earth through the king who now is in the saints of God that have been called out of the world, that have the first fruits of the spirit. It's the king that now is ruling in our hearts. And yet we don't see our body uh, perfected. In other words, the body is still going to the grave. Many people for 2,000 years have been walking with the Lord and yet they died in the body. We are waiting for the redemption of our bodies and we trust in the living God who raises the dead and who will conform us fully unto the Son, even in body, spirit, soul, and finally body, that we are being changed and transformed into His image. And it's by the working of the Son of God. And we don't yet see all these things done. We see them done in Jesus. Praise God. He has a new body. He has put on fully uh, immortality. Thanks be unto God. He did die once, but he can't die any longer. He's in a perfect, incorruptible, immortal body. And we're looking to be transformed into his same image by the glory, by the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. Thanks be unto God. And we have to wait for it. And we press with the perseverance of the Lord by the Spirit. Back to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. That's a powerful verse. Faith working through love is what God uses. Verse 7, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will no other or you that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And he's speaking of the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of these Judaizers that come in and try to mix the law with the grace of God. And unfortunately, that little bit of leaven of the of the legalism of uh, the law, it, it goes into the whole lump and pretty soon it's defiled. So we have to stay clear of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is what Jesus taught. Don't give yourself over to their teaching and don't give yourself over to their doctrine. Stay in the liberty of Christ. Verse 11, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I would, I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, lest you be consumed by one another. Folks, this is still a temptation. We know the uh, devices of Satan, the devices of the enemy. He's a tempter. He's a deceiver. And it is through the spirit of deception that people are led back to the works of the law. And that's where condemnation comes. That's where pride comes. Everything is thrown out of balance when one who has begun in Christ, which is what he was speaking to the Galatians, you ran well, who hindered you? Who came in and started to preach this mixture of the flesh and the spirit, of trying to accomplish the things of God through your own strength, according to the law? Wash yourself clean of that thinking and stay in Christ. Does it require patience? Yes, it does. Does it require perseverance? Does it require hope? faith, and most of all, love? 
Love casts out perfect, perfect love casts out all fear. It's the love of God that causes us to wait on the promise of the Lord, to be immovable upon the rock of our faith. We wait upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's an active faith. It doesn't mean that we don't do anything. We continue to walk with the Lord and we're led by him, by the spirit. But whatever comes, whatever happens, we stay in the things of the spirit, in the promises of God. And we trust in his word that that which he has begun in us, he will bring it to completion. We cast all our cares upon him. We don't pick up the burdens of the law and try to carry him. We bring him to Jesus and we say, we're incapable of fulfilling this Lord. And he fulfills it in us. And it doesn't mean that we don't work. He does the work and we work in him. Praise God. So there's a fulfillment of all these things. He's fulfilled all the law. How did he do it? The love of God fulfills all of the law and the prophets. Everything is fulfilled by that love. So thanks be unto God. He's in us now to fulfill his commandments, to do the work of the Father. And this is the meat. This is the work of the Son, to do everything that the Father is doing. In present time, in real time, praise the Lord. And that, of course, is what he said. This is kind of the centerpiece of this particular part of the scripture, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. That's verse 14. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. All the law is fulfilled in that. Continuing on, verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And the Spirit of Christ is in us of a truth. Stay founded in the promises of God. Stay founded in prayer and supplication, in leaning heavily upon the Lord. Are we going to come up against obstacles, tribulation? Are we going to find the, the weakness of our flesh still working in us? Absolutely. The Spirit is willing, Jesus said, but the flesh is weak. Cast your cares upon the Lord. It's the Spirit of the Lord that strengthens us and causes us to continue to walk in the purposes and the plan of the Lord in our daily lives, through the mundane things, where we seem like there seems to be a wrestling match between ourselves and sometimes the Spirit of God, because the Lord is leading us at times through difficult circumstances. And if we lean on our flesh to try to accomplish what only the Spirit can do, we delay the, the productivity of these things. We, if we yield our members to the Spirit and walk in Him, and it's a mystery, but the Lord makes us capable, makes us able through Jesus. This is why we keep our eyes upon the lover of our soul, and He makes us able to do all things. Thanks be unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory in him. We have the liberty in him. And his love has made us free. Stand in that liberty, beloved. And we will see you again soon. Amen.